Hello, welcome to today's Bible reading. Fasten your seatbelts because we're reading one of the longest chapters in the book of Numbers. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. I pray, speak to us as we read it. May we hear your voice through it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Numbers chapter 31. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Avenge the people of Israel on the Midianites. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm men from among you for the war, that they may go against Midian to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. You shall send a thousand from each of the tribes of Israel to the war. So there were provided out of the thousands of Israel a thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand from each tribe, together with Phinehas, the son of Eliezer the priest, with the vessels of the sanctuary and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. They warred against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian with the rest of their slain, Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, Reba, the five kings of Midian. And they also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with the sword. And the people of Israel took captive the women of Midian and their little ones, and they took as plunder all their cattle, their flocks, and all their goods, all the cities in the places where they lived, and all the encampments they burned with fire, and took all the spoil and all the plunder, both of man and of beast. Then they brought the captives and the plunder and the spoil to Moses and to Eliezer the priest, and to the congregation of the people of Israel at the camp, on the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, at Jericho. Moses and Eliezer the priest and all the chiefs of the congregation went to meet them outside the camp. And Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, who had come from service in the war. Moses said to them, Have you let all the women live? Behold, these, on Balaam's advice, caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in the incident of Peor, and so the plague came among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. But all the young girls who have not known man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves, and camp outside the camp seven days. Whoever of you has killed any person, and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves and your captives on the third day, and on the seventh day, you shall purify every garment, every article of skin, or work of goat's hair, and every article of wood. Then Eliezer the priest said to the men in the army who had gone to battle, This is the statute of the law that the Lord has commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that can stand the fire, you shall pass through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall also be purified with the water for impurity. And whatever cannot stand the fire, you shall pass through the water. You must wash your clothes on the seventh day, and you shall be clean. And afterward you may come into the camp. The Lord said to Moses, Take the count of the plunder that was taken, both of man and of beast, you and Eliezer the priest and the heads of the fathers' houses of the congregation. And divide the plunder into two parts between the warriors who went out to battle and all the congregation, and levy for the Lord a tribute from the men of war who went out to battle, one out of five hundred of the men and of the oxen and of the donkeys and of the flocks. Take it from their half and give it to Eliezer the priest as a contribution to the Lord. And from the people of Israel's half you shall take one drawn out of every fifty, of the people, of the oxen, of the donkeys, and of the flocks, of all the cattle, give them to the Levites who keep guard over the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eliezer the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now the plunder remaining of the spoil that the army took was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 persons in all, women, who had not known man by lying with him. And the half, the portion of those who had gone out in the army, numbered 337,500 sheep, and the Lord's tribute of the sheep 
was 675. The cattle were 36,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was 61. The persons were 16,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 32 persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which is the contribution for the Lord, to Eliezer the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. From the people of Israel's half, which Moses separated from that of the men who had served in the army, now the congregation's half was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, and 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 persons. From the people of Israel's half, Moses took one of every 50, both of persons and of beasts, and gave them to the Levites, who kept guard over the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the officers who were over the thousands of the army and commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds came near to Moses and said to Moses, Your servants have counted the men of war who are under our command, and there is not a man missing from us. And we have brought the Lord's offering, what each man found, articles of gold, armlets and bracelets, signet rings, earrings and beads, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. And Moses and Eliezer the priest received from them the gold, all the crafted articles, and all the gold of the contribution that they presented to the Lord from the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds was 16,750 shekels. The men in the army had each taken plunder for himself. And Moses and Eliezer the priest received the gold from the commanders of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the people of Israel before the Lord. Uh, I guess the, the thing to note here in this passage is that Balaam died in this, in this battle and thus what he saw he experienced as well, that Israel would dominate. Let's continue Numbers chapter 32. Now the people of Reuben and the people of Gad had a very great number of livestock and they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead and behold the place was a place for livestock. So the people of Gad and the people of Reuben came and said to Moses and to Eliezer the priest and to the chiefs of the congregation, Atroth, Deben, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Elilah, Sebum, Nebo and Bone, the land that the Lord struck down before the congregation of Israel, is a land for livestock and your servants have livestock. And they said, if we have found favour in your sight, let this land be given to your servants for a possession. Do not take us across the Jordan. But Moses said to the people of Gad and to the people of Reuben, Shall your brothers go to war while you sit here? Why will you discourage the heart of the people of Israel from going over into the land that the Lord has given them? Your fathers did this when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the valley of Eshkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the people of Israel from going into the land that the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled on that day, and he swore, saying, Surely none of the men who came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, none except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was gone. And behold, you have risen in your father's place, a brood of sinful men, to increase still more the fierce anger of the Lord against Israel. For if you turn away from following him, he will again abandon them in the wilderness, and you will destroy all this people. Then they came near to him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our livestock, and cities for our little ones. But we will take up arms, ready to go before the people of Israel, until we have brought them to their place. And our little ones shall live in the fortified cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until each of the people of Israel has gained his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on the other side of the Jordan and beyond, because our inheritance has come to us on this side of the Jordan to the east. So Moses said to them, If you will do this, 
if you will take up arms to go before the Lord for the war, and every armed man of you will pass over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out his enemies from before him, and the land is subdued before the Lord, then after that you shall return and be free of obligation to the Lord and to Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Just by the way, that was the verse, and that, that last half was the verse I heard more often from my mother growing up when she knew I'd done something wrong. She would quote that, be sure your sins will find you out. And there it is. Anyway, I digress. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Build cities for your little ones and folds for your sheep, and do what you have promised. And the people of Gad and the people of Reuben said to Moses, Your servants will do as my Lord commands. Our little ones, our wives, our livestock, and all our cattle shall remain there in the cities of Gilead. But your servants will pass over every man who is armed for war before the Lord to battle as my Lord orders. So Moses gave command concerning them to Eliezer the priest and to Joshua the son of Nun and to the heads of the father's houses of the tribes of the people of Israel. And Moses said to them, If the people of Gad and the people of Reuben, every man who is armed to battle before the Lord, will pass with you over the Jordan and the land shall be subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. However, if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the people of Gad and the people of Reuben answered, What the Lord has said to your servants we will do. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, and the possession of our inheritance shall remain with us beyond the Jordan. And Moses gave to them the people of Gad and to the people of Reuben and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sion, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land and its cities with their territories, the cities of the land throughout, throughout the country. And the people of Gad built Dibon, Ataroth, Aurora, Atroth Shophan, Jazer, Jogbeha, Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran, fortified cities and folds for sheep. And the people of Reuben built Heshbon, Elilah, Kiriathaim, Nebo, and baal Moan. Their names were changed, and Sibma. And they gave other names to the cities that they built. And the sons of Machir, the sons of Manasseh, went to Gilead and captured it, and dispossessed the Amorites who were in it. And Moses gave Gilead to Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he settled in it. And Jer, the son of Manasseh, went and captured their villages, and called them Haboth, Jer and Nobah went and captured Kenath and its villages and called it Nobah after his own name. Just a little technical point right at the end of that when it says the sons of Machir, the son of Manasseh, and so on. Um, this is how the Bible uses the expression father and son. Uh, a son can be a descendant and it could be a great, 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 great grandson. And coming back this way, the expression father can also refer to grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. Because, of course, Manasseh was 400 years before this generation. So I don't think he was 400 years old to be the father of these people. So just a, a point, when, when we're looking at the genealogies, for example... Very, very difficult to come up with, with any dating of certain events purely by the genealogies because of this phenomena that we see in the, the record of the generations, just by the way. Uh, the, other, the other point here is that these tribes, Reuben, Gad and Manasseh, the half-tribe, Manasseh, wanted to stay where they were. They were quite content to stay where they were, but Moses said, but it's all in. It's not, it's not three on this side and nine on this side. It's 12 conquering the land and then you can settle here. And I think there's a principle there for how we, as the body of Christ, uh, recognize what it says in perhaps Romans, where it says, when one rejoices, all rejoice. When one is sorrowful, all are sorrowful. So this is a, a point here, I think, that highlights that, uh, that God wanted his people to support 
each other. All right, let's have a look. Psalm 67 now. This is a little bit shorter, just seven verses. To the choir master with stringed instruments, a song, a psalm. Uh, notice that it's not necessarily from David, and uh, the scribes who've noted this haven't, haven't told us who it was. Maybe they didn't know. But not all the psalms were written by David, just as we'll see. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Selah. Now we read that in Numbers chapter 6, by the way. That was the blessing. That your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, as we look at these portions of numbers, we, we find it foreign. We find it so different to the new covenant. And so firstly, I just want to say thank you for Jesus. <laughs> thank you for the new covenant. Thank you, Lord, that we're not called to war in the way that Israel was called to war. We're not called to shed blood and take lives. We're called to bring life to people. And that's the difference between old and new covenant. And so today I pray that your life and love would shine through us to others. Thank you, Lord, for what we've read. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. If you haven't already liked this, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate you subscribing. That way, if you log into YouTube each day, you should, in your subscription, see each fresh video come up every day and you can keep track. I'd also be interested, now that we're sort of flying through this, how many of you have actually tracked through so far the, the previous 61 videos up until today? Uh, maybe put a comment there. I'd be really interested. A couple of people have asked me, how many are actually tracking every day? My answer is, oh, I don't actually know. So if you have, let me know. I'd, I'd appreciate it. I might even find it encouraging. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for our next Daily Bible. Thank you.